Welcome to the Workforce Connection. My name is Rob Mellion. I'm the CEO of the Fort River Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The Workforce Connection is co-produced by Bristol Community College, the Fort River Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and Fort River Community Media. And together, we help bring to you the issues and people who are important to those who are seeking employment and also uh, to area employers as well. This month's edition of the Workforce Connection is particularly special for me because we're talking about an initiative and a program at the Chamber of Commerce that really impacts the entire South Coast region and addresses one of the most important issues that's facing our region. And to help us talk about adding up is Nick Christ, who is President and CEO at Bay Coast Bank and is also the chair of the edu Education Committee at the Chamber of Commerce. And we also have Sally Cameron, who is on the Education Committee and is Vice President of College Communications at Bristol Community College. I want to welcome both of you to the Workforce Connection Television Glad Program. To be here, Rob. Thank you. Now, with Sally, it's kind of fun with you because you know you have been one of the people who's actually inspired the creation of this television show itself. So, and yeah, thank you. So, we'll talk about that maybe uh, when we get into the conversation here because it's also a piece of the Education Committee. But Nick, maybe we begin the conversation about the Education Committee itself and talk about why it was created because you had very much to do with the restructuring and relaunching of the education committee at the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, um, approximately three years ago, um, we felt uh, the need to reconstitute the education committee. Um, uh, the education committee had been, um, um, I guess, put aside for a period of time. And um, uh, we didn't see, um, we felt the need for uh, the business community to, to uh, reinvigorate itself and recharge itself and, be, and really try to tackle uh, um, the issue of uh, educational attainment uh, in the city. Initially, our focus was on the dropout issue. And while that's still extremely important, I think our vision has risen much um, more than that and is, uh, is one where we're really looking at uh, kids uh, going on to uh, college. And I think that part of it too is uh, addressing the job skills gap yep. that's in the region here and how to make people more marketable. Right. And can you talk a little bit about some of the work of the education committee uh, that led up to the development of the EDUP campaign that we're currently mm -hmm working on as well, we speak? Yeah, for uh, many months we really struggled with the idea of just exactly what direction we should we should go in. Um, there was certainly a, a part of us that I think wanted to uh, jump right into the classroom and teach the teachers how to teach and quickly we, we determined that that was not our place. We're not professional teachers. We don't know how to do that. Um, so we, we did struggle for a period of time and what type of impact could we have on education in the city? Um, I think we did uh, form a strong consensus after a number of months that what we did do, and we th think that we did well as a group, uh, uh, is communicate or market certain ideas. And advocacy. We, advocacy. Yeah. And um, so we moved in that direction. We felt that we needed to stay out of uh, the actual running of the schools and really begin to have a dialogue as best we can uh, with the city and all of its uh, citizens. And um, the idea of developing a comprehensive marketing plan um, really then blossomed. Now I recall that one of the first issues that the Education Committee tackled was level services funding for the schools. Yeah. Why is that critical to the business community? Uh, well, um, why is it? Um, we're trying to move the needle. We're trying to move um, educational attainment. And um, we saw a, a potential negative trend in the city as related to um, uh, something that the state calls minim net minimum school spending on um, a per student basis. and. Um, um, that we felt that uh, that traction uh, had been obtained and that the city was beginning to move 
the school department was beginning to move positively and that we felt that anything other than the net minimum as defined by the Commonwealth would be uh, a detriment to that momentum. And as we all know, it's so difficult to build something of substance and of, of worth and how easy it is to tear down. So we felt it was our obligation um, uh, to really to speak out and advocate for the minimum of net, the net minimum school spending that is defined by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and, and settle for nothing less. Now, how does this fit in with, I mean, the basis of the Ed Up campaign is about improving educational attainment levels here uh, throughout the entire region. Yeah. How does this fit in, and you can speak to this as an employer, mm -hmm. uh, how does, it, how does educational attainment fit in with the evolving economy uh, throughout this region and its, its opportunity for individuals to be a part of that yeah. economy? Rob, honestly, you're the best guy to speak to that. I've heard you speak <laughs> a number of times on this subject. But, uh, and wh why, don't, why don't you uh, really answer that? Because can, well, I'll, no education, no job. Yeah, well. I mean, that's, I mean, that's the that short That economy version. is long gone. We all know yes. that. Go ahead. Well, well thanks. <laughs> I, I think that the short of it is that the economy is evolving. And I think that, and many of us feel that if you're going to, if you're going to have any opportunity going forward here into an economy that is evolving into a technology-focused economy, which is happening all across the world, it isn't just here. I mean, it is global. 21st century yes. industries. That's yes, what well, it really about. is here. I mean, niche manufacturing, we've talked about it on other shows with the Workforce Connection. But if you don't have the marketable skills necessary to land a job today, you're just not going to have a job. Right. And that's, in my mind, that's really what this Ed Up campaign and what the work of the Chamber and what the work of all of its partners is all about. Yeah. You know, nationally and internationally, we see, uh, we talk about 21st century in industries. Those jobs, which will be plentiful, require a highly educated workforce. And we need um, our population to recognize that if they want to improve the quality of life, they got to first improve their educational attainment. And, and um, exactly, and it's no accident. And that's why we didn't stop with high school. Yes, and that's very early on. I think we're both yeah. we're both looking at Sally because <laughs> it's no accident yeah. that Bristol Community College is a very close partner, and also University of Massachusetts, and all I mean the high schools, the and not just the public high schools either, right. but the parochial schools too. We're all in this together, and yeah. the city of Fall River. We're all in this together. Yeah, you bring up an, an interesting point. On, on our committee, we have three superintendents. I'm, I'm not sure if there, I've heard of any other committee that has that um, uh, level of commitment. We have uh, certainly uh, Meg Mayo Brown, the superintendent of schools of Fall River. Uh, Monta, Marta, Marta, yeah, Marta Mont Motleon. From um, uh, the superintendent at Diamond. And then Mike Griffin, who's superintendent of schools for the Diocese of Fall River. They're all committed to this project. Uh, they all believe very strongly in, in moving the needle for the entire city, for the entire population. And I think it's, uh, it's um, remarkable that we can, um, we have that level of commitment. So what is the Ed Up campaign? And Sally, you had a lot to do with the formation she of the She is Ed Up. the chairman of, of messaging. I am. Yeah, so, so she's a good person to talk about this. Yes. Well, the EdUp uh, messaging is about aspiration. That is what the committee has uh, crystallized the, the message for all of our residents that they would aspire to uh, as high an education as they can get in order to improve the, the region and improve the, edu the educational and economic opportunities for our region. So that's what Ed Up is about, is sharing those messages of aspiration and how from the very start, from, from pre-K right through graduate level, that students need to aspire to get as high an education as they can. And like we just said, it directly corresponds with your marketability in today's job market. I mean, if you don't Ed Up, 
you are going to have a hard time moving forward and being able to provide for your family. I mean, that's, that's the nuts and bolts economics yes. uh, to the whole campaign here. What is the actual goal of the campaign? As the uh, communications officer for Bristol Community College, I would say that every student would earn at least some post-secondary education by uh, the end of the next decade. That's what I'd like to see happen, so that's my aspiration. But I think that the goal of the Ed Up is to make more people, more parents, more students, want to pursue that and prepare for it from the very earliest ages. One of the things that I've learned on this committee uh, when Superintendent Mayo Brown talked about some research they did that if kindergartners ten miss 10 percent of the days of their kindergarten year, they were more likely to drop out of, sc of school. They were more likely to not complete high school and then of course they wouldn't go on to college. So that speaks to the very early ages how important it is to be setting that aspirational goal in front of our kids. Nick, why does Ed Up matter to you? Yeah. Um, quality of life. I think that from, from my perspective, it, uh, you know, you go to the bottom line, it's a quality of life issue. If we want to move the city of Fall River forward, um, I think the most important thing that we can do, the most important economic driver uh, to move the quality of life is to improve our educational attainment. Um, that's why it's important to me. Um, I see nothing of uh, equal, really, um, um, to improve the quality of life. And I think that's what it's all about. We want to make this uh, city a better place uh, than it is today. Uh, and we want a better place for our children and their children. And if we can, uh, if we can create a culture over a long time uh, uh, time period um, that addresses this and makes education a top of mind subject, and um, and that people recognize it's a great importance. I think we'll um, have done something very special. Now I can I can talk for a second about why it matters to the chamber and why it particularly matters, you know, to someone like me who got involved with this from the very beginning as well. Is I never have forgotten how it felt to be sitting in that city council chamber when we were pitted against mm. public safety and yeah. public workers and in a sense this community had to make a Sophie's choice between potholes and funding of education you know something for today or tomorrow and that made it real tangible for me right. about why we needed to move forward with this project. And uh, I think that's why this project is extra special and why all of us have come to the table here. And we're going to go to break here, but can you just quickly talk about how this has been a collaborative process and I mean, who is engaged with this project? The, the uh, All of the schools have high-level people at the table. Uh, President Spraga sits on the on the committee and comes w as he can. Uh, Vice President Joan Menard sits on the committee and comes as she can. They asked me to attend because it was becoming a a messaging issue, a, a marketing issue, and and that's my expertise. So it's really very impressive to me to see the the movers and shakers of the community who are from all different aspects, from pre-K up through graduate level, business, uh, nonprofits are sitting at the table and talking about how important this is and how we're going to move the needle. And we're going to talk specifically about what the Ed Up campaign is, but first we're going to have a public service announcement. And when we come back, like I said, we're going to talk about all about the Ed Up campaign and to express to people how they can get involved with it too. So we'll be right back after this public service announcement.
first, you gotta have everything's gonna be equal. You know, your left side, your right side's gonna be equal length. All it takes is a couple scoopfuls of water in that, and you lose a lot of uh, a lot of buoyancy. Well, my name is Jeremy Moranville, engineering student at Bristol Community College, and this is my boat. It's just cardboard, duct tape, and plastic bags. So structurally, you got cardboard and duct tape, and then for buoyancy, plastic bags. Right here, I am sealing up the nose cone. Well, I mean, this this is engineering. I mean, what I'm doing right here is hands-on physical fabrication. Now, I stumbled upon this a couple years ago. It was a fun little project. I'm actually like a design fabricator, so this is kind of right up my alley. This brings it all together. This turns it from a piece of cardboard to something that you could float with. I'd say with this design, Giving my teammate ate his, ate his Wheaties in the morning, and as says I, I think we're a contender for first place. Like I said, he's definitely gonna eat his Wheaties. He ain't gonna do this on, on no McDonald's for breakfast. The water's nice and cool, it's a hot day. And it was the cardboard duct tape canoe race, fourth annual. You're only allowed to use cardboard, duct tape, and trash bags, and you have to put them in some order to make a canoe. Exhausting. No cards are all deep this year. Anybody can build a boat. There is actually very little science behind these boats. If it was just me, definitely float. With two people, it could sink. I'm a good, I'm a good enough swimmer that I'm not worried about it. All right, boat, take your mark and go. As far as the build went, the boat worked great. Um, we took the best time, 147. It was fulfilling, yeah, because you know we had over 300 pounds centered in the middle of this cardboard boat, and you know it didn't it didn't crack in half, it didn't, it didn't bend. You know, obviously Jeremy saw the design and seeing it put together and getting it in the water was a really good experience. It's my second year doing it, so. You know, it's a fun time, definitely, if you have the chance to come out and build a boat. So we are giving you the Perseverance Award. The reason why we do this, this race, we like the community building we, we do. Students get to know other students, uh, you get to have a good time. One, you, you build that sense of community with the students, because we're a two-year school and it's everybody's racing to get their degree done, and you don't really have anything that gets students connected with other students besides classes. And this is something that everybody comes out to, everybody watches. You get to actually meet your admins, you get to meet the faculty outside the classroom. It just, it really promotes us. It just promotes us, promotes the school. It, build, it helps build awareness for engineering, for science, technology, math. Welcome back to the Workforce Connection. I'm Rob Million. I'm the CEO of the Fort River Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and our guests for this show are Nick Christ, who is President and CEO at Bay Coast Bank, and also the Chair of the Education Committee at the Chamber of Commerce, and Sally Cameron, who is Vice President of College Communications at BCC, and I want to welcome both of you back. We're talking about the Ed Up campaign uh, that is underway here, and it really is underway. And let's talk about Ed Up and why it was developed We've kind of hit on ultimately the reasoning to it, but how was it developed, I think, is a, a good question because it isn't just something that we've been winging along the way here. There was a lot of thought that went into the development of the Ed Up campaign. There was a lot of research, a lot of um, investigation, and uh, Nick, I wonder if you'd talk about Nora's. Uh, sure. Survey first, and then okay. how that led into. That's where Dr. We're Barnes going. that you're talking yeah, about, Dr. Nora Barnes. Yeah, her Center of Market Research at University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth. I guess it's uh, it's uh, uh, about a year and a half ago we approached yeah. uh, Dr. Barnes if she'd be willing to have her uh, students conduct a survey as it relates to perceptions on education in the uh, city of Fall River. Um, um, she didn't uh, um, target any specific group. It was more a general survey uh, of how people felt about education. And um, that was really their first uh, foray into uh, trying to get a feeling for um, how we were going to message, how we were going to brand uh, our marketing plan. And uh, her students did a remarkable job, and we have some great, great information that was derived from that survey. And um, 
we, we pass that survey material off then to Professor Chapman. Uh, another, I, you know, I, and I'm not sure what school that is at, at UMass, but. <clears throat> it was with the Charlton College of Business, I believe. Yeah. So then they began to um, 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 really sink their teeth into the information that was provided and uh, began to uh, build ideas as it relates to how, what type of brand we should be uh, um, uh, um, focusing on, what, what, what type of a tagline, and what, how it would look. Um, and, and, uh, and now we have it. We, we tested it, it and yeah. now we have it. And it was launched in September. Uh, actually, uh, I remember uh, the rollout of that. Now we've had a couple of forums that have uh, been with the community. And now I think, I, I think something for us to talk about here, though, and Sally, maybe you can address this, is this is a rolling uh, start to the EdUp campaign, and it's going to be sustained. And maybe you can talk to that uh, as, as well. And then, uh, Nick, you can talk about how this is going to be sustained. She's a messaging chair. We try to let the but we're not doing this for like three months and then no, we're going to no, no. put it on I the shelf. I will say, and, and then Sally can take over. Well, this is a long-term commitment. Uh, early on, we recognized that <clears throat> we're going to be at this not um, uh, a year or two, but many, many, many years. Because we're talking about the changing of a mindset. A mindset, a culture. We're, re mm -hmm. we're going to create a, a culture that makes education a top-of-mind subject in every citizen in, the, in Fall River. That's the goal. Yeah. And that's a very, very ambitious goal. I mean, the research that Dr. Barnes' students did demonstrated that a huge percentage of parents want their kids to go to school. And that worked against the sort of conventional wisdom that people think about in Fall River, that, that Fall River parents don't think their kids are going to go to college. But so many of them want to. And then there's the concern that it's, a, it's not affordable, that you can't pay for it, that 60% of them were just concerned about how they were going to make that happen. Well, there are answers to all of those questions. And so that is some of what the messaging for Ed Up is going to do. What Ed Up is trying to say is that you bring your aspirations, you bring your sweat and your, your hard work, and we'll get you to where you need to go. At Bristol Community College, you can attend for not a lot of money. It's much cheaper than many other educational opportunities. And you can go anywhere you want when you graduate from BCC. UMass Dartmouth, right down the road, great options there. Uh, there's financial aid. There's all sorts of ways to do it. Uh, partnering with, we're going to have a show in the future where we have the Workforce Investment Board on. We're going to have uh, the Career Centers on. And there are opportunities through the Career Centers using state dollars that help you get that BCC degree and move on into uh, UMass Dartmouth. There are opportunities. So but I, people don't know how to get into those opportunities. That's right. So that's some of our messaging. And the other stories that we're trying to tell are about people who have accessed those resources yes. and people who have turned their lives around have done what they've wanted to do starting from very very young we have some wonderful programs for pre-k in the in the city the children's museum has some great programs that they got grants for that they're they're teaching their their preschoolers about stem initiatives mm, yes. and so to think that we're teaching four-year-olds that science is something that's wonderful. That's what EdUp is all about. It's, it's sort of consolidating those efforts and providing the system to get people through. Why was this important for BCC to have a hand in the shaping of the EdUp campaign? Well, this is what we are all about. We, we opportunity is us. <laughs> we, so for us, this is our community. And 90% of the people who graduated from this college live within 30 miles of campus. So Bristol Community College is invested in this community. And if we aren't helping students, children, 
to develop the skills they need to succeed in college, when they get to Bristol, they're going to have a hard time succeeding. They're going to have to take extra developmental courses or whatever they need in order to achieve their goals. Now, we can help them with that, but how much better for them to Already come in exactly. and, and take off and get on with their lives? Because this is, isn't I mean, a part of what EdUp is all about is self-help and about you know, coming to the table with the best skills that you can provide yourself with, ultimately to make yourself more marketable, ultimately to improve yourself. It's I optimistic, think isn't it? it? It is, and I think that that's one of the things that I have seen is a really important piece of this campaign is that there's too much of an inferiority complex that we have in the South Coast of feeling like well, you know, maybe our schools are not as good as they should be, or maybe we can't achieve, or maybe our kids don't have enough money to go to school. Well, that's all garbage. That's not true. So we're going to, using truth, using stories that demonstrate how people have been able to make their lives what they want it to be, that through Ed Up, we're trying to just aggregate those stories and be able to share them. We've talked about it so many times. Success creates success. And anybody who's been successful in business, and Nick, you know this with your eyes closed, anybody who's successful in business, you know, you've had some success, you've tasted it, and you're able to reproduce it. Right. And that's also partially what this is all about too. Yes. You know, get people to the pathways that will help create success for them, and we find ways to help reproduce it so that they get uh, some confidence and are able to take their lives in places they never thought was possible. I mean, that's why I'm personally, I'm so excited about this campaign and what it is potentially going to do here. Who is the intended audience? We haven't that's talked a, about that. That's a very good question. Uh, as you mentioned initially um, at the start of the show, this is our, our it, it, we're just rolling this marketing campaign out. Um, in the last number of months, it was, uh, identified that uh, we can't go out and market to everybody all at once. So our initial focus uh, as we speak today is in um, our target audience is the parents. And that's who we're first trying to communicate directly with. Um, we're not going to stop there, but that's who we're focusing our attention on now. Right. One of our other standing committees is the um, what membership, is it? membership uh, committee. And that's chaired by Missy Panchley. Uh, she's had one initial uh, uh, meeting, and it's the intention that from that there'll be other meetings, uh, and there'll be other meetings with other groups it, for, with years to come. But initially, it's just the the parents that uh, we're trying to sit down and figure out just exactly uh, how we should be communicating uh, our very important message. We want them to be engaged uh, in the process, and that's just starting as we speak. And so are we. <laughs> we're just starting with Ed Up, Absolutely. and I think we're going to have more in the future here. We're running out of time right now, and one thing, though, that I want to direct people to is that there is an Ed Up website that's been developed, which is uh, Fall River, uh, no, it's FR uh, Ed Up, I believe, uh, dot com and dot org. We made it so that there were multiple ways to get to it. Basically, for anybody who uses a search engine, you just put in Fall River, add up, you're going to get to it. The bottom line is that there's a resource that's being created. We're rolling this thing out slowly. You're going to see billboards. You're going to yeah. see stickers. Eventually, it's just going to pick up steam, and that's the whole purpose of this. This is the introduction, and you're going to see a lot more about it. I want to thank all of you uh, for being on the show. My pleasure. Uh, it has been Thank a very you. good half yeah, hour, and we're going to do a lot more in the future. And thanks for listening and for watching the show, and we're going to catch you next month with another edition of the Workforce Connection. <laughs>